Okay, so in this quick chapter I will show you on how to create a very basic landscape. Now because landscapes inside of Unreal Engine can go from easy to very complicated, we will just focus on the landscape itself and not on the actual material, because the material itself is really really advanced. So for that I would recommend that you simply go online and you just find like a free landscape material. Now it works very easy, all you really want to do is if you go up here to activate landscape editing mode, you will see this. So you can see this massive plane over here. And then you can also notice how small our level actually is. So there's a few settings that I only really focus on. The first one is the section size. If I set my section size higher, I basically just get like a larger plane as you can see over here. So that's the only one that I do. So you, you can also go for like a very small looking landscape. Uh, the number of components, they kind of like correspond with the section size. So if I set this to 16 to 16 for example, you can see that it still becomes bigger. So that's kind of like, they kind of like work hand in hand. And the same with the overall resolution. Everything kind of like works together. If I do like uh, 241, it's a, it is a bit of like a strange looking values, I should say, as you can see over here. But they all just basically correspond. So that's basically it for that one. Um, once you are pretty much done with this, so this is all you really need to do, is you can go ahead and you can press create over here. There we go. And now we have this plane. Uh, I probably should have moved it down, but you are able to still move it down after. The way that you can do that is simply just click on your landscape. And I just need to probably go outside of landscape mode for this. Or maybe I can just do select. No, I cannot do select. That has changed a little bit. So if I go outside of landscape mode, over here I have my gizmo. Uh, there you are. So it's a lot e more annoying to move it down. However, if you know that you need to move down the blue gizmo, you can always just scroll up here. And technically you can always just go to like here, the location of the blue gizmo and like move it down like that. See, so that's like one way of doing it. And I can like push it down all the way if I want. Okay, so let's say that I have this. I'm just going to leave my planes because I'm not going to actually keep this landscape in this scene. As soon as you go ahead and you click on the landscape and you create it, you will have a bunch of options. You will have the sculpt option. This is a classic. It's basically if I just set my brush size down here a little bit lower, it's this stuff. I can basically just sculpt on my landscape as you can see. And uh, yeah, it's just quite easy to just create like some very basic looking mountains, for example. Let's say that I create like some mountains over here. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to show you a few of the sculpt options and then um, just throw on like a basic material and then call it a day. So let's say we have like uh, some mountains over here. They are not very nice, but it's just for the purposes. Let's say that they are too sharp. What I can do then is I can go to my smooth option. By the way, you have all of these brush options over here. Although I personally just leave them at the basics. You can go ahead and you can like smooth this down to make everything like a little bit softer. We have the flatten option. The flatten option, you should be able here if I like set this, it will be able to make everything flat. However, you can also go to your tool settings and set like a flattened target. And if I set this higher, it, what it will do is it will basically flatten on a specified height. See? So I can set this to like, say, uh, 260 meters. Or I don't know exactly if it is meters. It's just a value that I use. But that way you can like flatten stuff out, which is often very handy. If you, for example, have a very hilly looking environment and you just want to quickly have like a flat piece for like a, uh, like a house, for example. It's very easy to do this. And then you can always just go in and like nicely soften this out. Um, the ramp is quite cool. So the ramp, if I just go over here, what you can do with the ramp is you can basically click and drag. And then what you want to do is you want to basically move this up. And then when you do that, you can press Art Ramp. And what it will do is it will basically add a ramp based upon these two values. And you can always just like set this lower. And I believe that if you then press Art Ramp, yes, it will add it. And yeah, you can even set it like sideways. So this stuff is really cool. Although if you set it sideways, it will of course uh, just keep also the old one. But yeah, so this stuff is really cool. Especially if you do like uh, racing games. Or even if you're just having like a ramp going towards a building. The erosion is really cool. The erosion basically will give our mountains like a little bit more flare as you can see. So you can see that they instantly look a little bit more realistic and erosion basically just means like weathering effects like uh, uh, over the millions of years of rain and uh, just like a bunch of other weathering effects you can get like a bit of erosion 
Over here, and also sun. Over here you have the hydro. The hydro is specifically towards rain. Um, at this point I probably want to just make my mountain a little bit larger so that we can actually see what I'm doing. Here we go. So the hydro is specifically for rain. You can see that it's a bit tricky to see it because um, our terrain is so basic. But um, it will basically adjust based upon the rain. We have a noise. It will just add some random noise to our terrain. Retopology. So the retopology, if we do that one, it basically adds a little bit more polygons. And basically makes all the polygons a little bit cleaner wherever we paint it. I think I can go to wireframe to show you. So here, for example, wireframe, and then I show you this. This looks not as nice. So if I do a retopology, it will basically try to like do a very quick retopo. And just make all of your geometry feel a little bit nicer and less stretched. Uh, yeah, that's how I should say, less stretched. So that's just the retopology. It does not actually change your values, but um, it's still quite nice. And then we have visibility and the mirror and the select and the copy. I personally have never used them. Um, so I assume that the visibility is just like that I can paint out certain areas, but uh, I honestly am not sure. As I said before, Unreal is a very large program. You can definitely look into it. Uh, the mirror function I also have never really used, but I assume it's just like mirroring your entire terrain. So if I do this and press apply, yeah, see here. So it's just about mirroring your entire terrain, just like that. And you can just do like a very easy mirror. So the tools are very basic also. I should say that. Uh, select, you are able to select something and copy. Uh, Copy data to Gizmo. So it's probably like here. We copy this over here. But honestly, yeah, this one I'm not completely sure about. But uh, I don't want to show you something that I do not know. Because you will most likely also never really use it. It's not really what this is about. So over here we have like our terrain and everything. If I just go clear region selection in our select so that we don't see that stuff. So we have our terrain over here. So that's pretty good. Now, as I said before, the landscape can also handle materials. However, materials for a landscape, they are very specific. And unfortunately, it also means that they are very difficult um, to set up. However, your landscape can also have actually normal materials. I can even literally drag on like my cobblestone material on this. Although I should go outside of edit mode. So if you maybe go to um, like over here to our mesh mode or we can just simply close this. Click on our terrain and what you have in your terrain over here or your landscape, sorry, is it will ask you for a landscape material down here. So you can technically just drag in any material you want. Here now I have cobblestone. It will take a second for it to actually compile and add all of the cobblestone here. But technically you can see that now I have a cobblestone material for which I should still be able to edit everything just like five, normal, unless I changed it in Unreal Engine 5. It's like 0 0.2, see? So just like that, or 0. Point, I don't know, 4, I am able to very easily add a cobblestone material. Also tiling it, I believe that tiling it on the, tiling it in a minus on our actual terrain is a little bit more forgiving. So you won't be able to, you won't see any seams or anything like that. So just like that, you have cobblestone. Now, your terrain basically uses something that's called vertex painting for this. But as I said before, I will personally not go over that. What I would do is I would, for example, just uh, showcase a created instance and just call this gray, for example. And for this material, I would like set my roughness to zero, um, translucent amount to zero, or sorry, to one. Oh wait, so this material is already translucent, so it wouldn't really make much sense for me to throw on a translucent material. You can of course remove the translucent if you want, but uh, for this demo it's not really worth it. In any case, you can just drag in whatever you want on this, including like a very base material. I can even go for example to materials, create new one, call it gray, gray A, I mean, and just drag that on. Oops. There we go. And then you will just have like a very basic gray material. Uh, looks like it shows us black. So we might just want to very quickly add like a constant tree vector. And just make it like gray. 
I'm doing this very quickly just to show you on how to like uh, have like a nice default that I often use when I'm sculpting because when I'm sculpting I just like to often just preview it in grey like you can see over here. So that's about it for our landscape. If you want to go ahead and you want to get rid of it you can always just select it and simply press delete. And then we are back at our old, old original scene. And then maybe like here we go change our cobblestone back. And there we go. So that's it for our landscape. Now in the next chapter we will go over our very final chapter. In which we will showcase the sequence editor and the high resolution screenshot features. So let's go ahead and continue with that in our next chapter.